Hello and welcome back. Today we are looking again at Dane Ortland's book, uh, Gentle and Lowly. Uh, and today we are looking at chapter number seven. And, and the topic today is what sin evokes. Uh, what's going on in this chapter is uh, as Ortland is looking at the words, some of the words in Hosea 11, 8. Uh, those words are my heart recoils within me. These are the Lord's words. And many of us, when we hear those words, we go, I know exactly what's going on here. Uh, I, 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 I got it. Uh, the, these, these verses and these words speak about how ugly our sin is and how God hates our sin. And so I just know exactly what this is all about. You, you know, after all, we, we know this. It all makes sense. Sin dishonors the one true God. And, and the more that we come to know his holiness and his glory, the more that we will recoil at our own sin. And so uh, we know, though, that the Lord himself does hate sin. Uh, he sets himself, as a matter of fact, to punish the unrepentant. And yet, mysteriously, we might say, uh, God is gracious towards sinners. Uh, Romans uh, 5.20 says, Where sin increased, grace abounded all the more. So, so when God's children sin, right, it is a big deal. Right? We, we're not trying to minimize the sin. Uh, the, the Lord will, in fact, discipline us, yet his heart is drawn out in compassion uh, towards us, right? Even when we sin. Uh, Ortland points to some words of, of Thomas Goodwin, an illustration. A, a man may not uh, like to look at a child suffering. Let's say a child is suffering over there under a terrible disease, and a man might not want to look at that child and you know, doesn't want to think about that. But, but if, the, if the child suffering is his son, uh, he will look on that child, as a matter of fact, with compassion and pity. And so it is with the Lord. He doesn't like to look at sin, right? But sin and his children will, as a matter of fact, evoke compassion and pity from the Lord. And so this is, again, not to minimize sin. We're not saying just go ahead and sin and don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. No, it is. Uh, we must uh, battle sin by the power of the Holy Spirit. We, we, we should try to not sin. We should seek the Lord's help on this. Yet... When we look more fully at Hosea chapter 11, uh, we see that it makes a great point, a point we want to kind of end on. Uh, we were incorrect, as a matter of fact, to assume the verse was about the Lord's heart recoiling, right? Verse 8 we were looking at, specifically at sin. Now, now this, by the way, the Lord does, in a sense, recoil at sin. Uh, this is a common way for the Lord to speak about his um, his attitude towards sin, right? The Lord, as a matter of fact, even in Hosea chapter 9, the Lord speaks about how angry he is about the sin of his people. But in Hosea chapter 11, beginning in verse 7, uh, there's a mention of the terrible sin of the people. And yet it says the Lord, when the Lord considers the possibility of treating his people like Zeboim, which is basically a place near Sodom. So perhaps Sodom and Gomorrah, they got destroyed. What would happen is the Lord, when the Lord considers destroying his people like Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed at this thought, we find Hosea 11, 8 says, the Lord says, my heart recoils within me, right? I'm not going to destroy them like Sodom. My compassion grows warm and tender. Right? And isn't that astounding? Right? We expect the Lord to, to give up on us. And instead, we hear that his heart is warm and tender. Right? When he thinks about uh, the sin of his people and he thinks about maybe I should just crush him like Sodom, he says, I, I recoil at that thought. I actually am warm and tender toward my people. And, and this doesn't mean the people won't have discipline. They will have discipline. They'll go into exile. But the Lord's compassion means that he'll bring them back out of exile. Right? And more than that, he will one day send his son into the world to save sinners, right, through the cross of Jesus Christ. So, so we then should marvel at the Lord's compassion, right? May we love such a holy God and such a compassionate Savior. Uh, may this not lead us to live in sin, but to love the Savior and to seek his help to honor him by walking in a manner worthy, fully convinced of his heart of love and compassion for us.